Hello, you sex beasts, and welcome back to War Thunder. My name is Michael Zboom, and this is a live commentary on the Type 5 G Re 2, which in my configuration is a bush tank. More on the bushes a little bit later. This tanker is equipped with a 75mm Type 5 cannon. But not just any cannon, no. This is the very first auto-loading cannon that we have in War Thunder. As auxiliaries, you also have a 37mm gun mounted in the hull and a 7.7mm machine gun, which can be used for spotting. As you can see by the relative size from the crew to the tank, this thing is absolutely massive. It is very long and it is very, very tall. As you can see, there are also ammo racks, line, lying everywhere from the 75s to the 37s. Your crew consists of five people, your driver, machine gunner, aimer, commander and the loader. To notice that the gunner sits on the right side, but it's actually quite low in comparison to the overall height of the turret. You also have a secondary machine gun on the side that is currently not functioning whatsoever. Now what about the armor of the Type 5 Chiri? For a battle rating 5.0 tank and for being a medium tank, at least classified as a medium tank, it's not that bad. 75mm on turret front as well as on the hull front. With the lower glass is only 35mm thick, but extremely angled. The upper glass is only 20mm thick, but also angled to give a total of 75mm. And the sides also decently angled at 50mm. The top of the uh, hull is a little bit weak, only 20mm thick, which can be penetrated by some higher tier, um, higher caliber HG shells. But the commander skew pole is actually also 75, so not that bad. What is quite bad is the side of the hull. The side of the hull is only 35mm thick, which extends to the back of the hull, with the lower plate on the back being only 20mm thick. So the third, thankfully, remain at 50. Of course, these are big, fat, and flat targets, so they're not really going to stop anything at the battle rating, but with proper angling or, well, lack thereof, since the turret cheeks and the hull cheeks are pre-angled by themselves, you can bounce the occasional shot. Now, Mike, why does your tank look a massive bush tank? Well, it's exactly because of these weak spots. This tank, much like the uh, Tiger P chassis, as is featured on the Tiger 1P and on the Ferdinand in the German tech tree, cannot be angled. If you angle this tank, you're doing something wrong. Not only are you going to expose your extremely weak side armor and expose yourself to being overmatched by KV-2s, you also expose this rather big weak spot on the sides of the front hull and on the sides of the turret. As such, even though you should avoid trying to get directly shot at by multiple people or even a single enemy, because at Battle Rating 5.0 you're going to face some tanks, or well, most tanks that are going to have more penetration than your hull. But at long ranges and stuff like that, try to keep your hull as straight as possible. Now what about other weak spot when the thing is indeed completely frontally aligned? Well, the gun breach in itself is only 50 meters thick. Keep in mind that this on top is 50 millimeters on top, so don't aim for the recoil compensators, aim for the can breach itself. And do keep in mind that the outer layer is layered, as you can see, 20 mm on top of 75. Alternatively, you can simply shoot through this hole in the um, hull where the 37 and the 7.7 mm machine guns are mounted. This is only 50 mm as well and leads right into the face of the machine gunner, the gunner and the commander. In fact, shooting the hull in this spot is probably the best idea simply because you can get free crews and the vertical aiming drive. If not, also the horizontal aiming drive. And there's over half of the crew already dead in one shot. Now my tank is not fully upgraded, so keep that in mind. But from what I've played it so far, the power to rate ratio is... Eh... Okay, I still have a lot of engine upgrades to go for, but this thing is very big and very slow. The turret rotation speed is absolutely abysmal. It does have some decent vertical guidance between negative 10 and plus 20 degrees, but it's going to be a challenge to actually get your turret around. And even if your turret doesn't go around, your hull isn't going to get you anywhere either. This thing is so long and so heavy, it practically turns like a mouse. If you find yourself in a close card situation with the tank flanking you, there's not much you can do, to be honest. In fact, the fact that this tank is so tall can actually work against it. I've had situations with uh, smaller tanks, smaller light tanks, parking up right beside me and not really being able to do anything against them. Even if I could get my gun turned around. So what's so special about this gun then? Well, this is an autoloader. As you can see by the reloading rates, that 32.5 seconds is not the time needed to reload each shell. No. 
That's the total reload after you've expended all of your free shells in your clip. The 37 mm gun in the hole can carry a single APHE type with uh, 44 mm of penetration and 13 grams of TNT. Not too effective, but at least it can deal with light like, tanks that are in front of you. And the 75 only gets a selection of two ammo choices in APHE shell with only 445 mm of penetration. This is actually rather low, but a nice around 68 grams of explosive filler. Alternatively, you also have HEF IT shells, which are useless against tanks, but can be used against uh, flatbed trucks and light AA vehicles. Alright, enough strut crunching done. Let's see how this thing actually performs in battle. Alright, we are on Eastern Europe. Not exactly the ideal type of map for this kind of tank, since this pretty much forces the enemy to flank us, which is the last thing you want to have in this tank. Remember, only 35mm of side armor, 50mm on the side of the turret. This thing is not designed to take, da to take damage from the, fr from, the sh uh, from the sides. And in terms of mobility, as you can see, that Panther D is just pulling away from us so quickly. This thing is slow. This thing is a very slow. Even for being a medium tank, it really behaves like a heavy tank. Even the Tiger 1 is keeping up with us, even the KV-1 is keeping up with us. Now we do have a top speed of around 44 km per hour, which is not too bad. That being said, the acceleration is abysmal, as is the overall mobility over rough terrain, and once we had to do that, also mobility was trying to turn. Now tactics with the tank are a little bit different from what you're accustomed to. In normal tanks you can simply poke out, take a shot, poke back, uh, poke back in, stuff like that. And essentially layers a continuous blanket of fire, right? Not so much in this tank, I'm afraid. This tank relies on it, it, it pretty much rides and dies on your ability to put your shots in correctly, because you only get three shots per shell per, per magazine. And how you can use cover to well, go back into cover quickly. Because here's the thing. Once you run out of those three shells, you're looking at the 30 over 30 seconds uh, reload speed. Now keep in mind my tank my tank crew is by itself fully ace, but not uh, trained for this tank. So reload times can be higher or lower. In most cases they are going to be higher for you. Since I don't expect many people to have ace tank crews in the Japanese just yet. But this tank forces you to read the battle much more carefully than you have to in other tanks. You have to Always keep cover near. Now in this case, a city map is not too bad actually for this. Because yes, we can use this to our advantage. To be always near cover when we are trying to, to get fire in. That's an enemy tank. What is that? That's not yes. I don't think you see us. Ah, shit. The gun handling is also rather abysmal. Now thankfully, the AP shell does have a very nice explosive filler. Oh shit, yeah, and this is the problem. This is exactly what I was, ta what I was talking about. We are now surrounded by multiple enemy tanks. Now, we did take the Sherman out in the first shot, but... Side armor. The side armor is way too weak. Let, me let us see where this guy penetrated us. Right through the front of the hull, even. It didn't even go through the weak spot. So, that first battle did not go so well. We went to the city map, we pushed way too aggressively, that was actually my own gameplay fault. And look at, oh god, look at how horribly the hull traverse of this thing is. Look at, look at how slow this thing traverses its hull. This is abysmal, this is absolutely abysmal. It doesn't have any kind of neutral tank steering, really. And the way it tries to turn just, oh. Okay, this time we're going to try and stay a little bit more defensively. Instead of rushing head first into the cab zone and acting like a heavy tank, we shall try and see if we can stick around to the second line and provide supporting fire for our friendlies. Because that's technically where the autoloader really shines. Now, again, as I was finishing in my thoughts in the last uh, battle, you have to play this tank smartly. This, this tank doesn't quite play like any other tank in War Thunder. You have the very fast fire rate of 18 shots per minute, whilst you have rounds in the magazine. So you can get those three rounds off very, very quickly. But once those runs are, are expended, you're going to sit there for 30 seconds, essentially being useless. And your armor is not going to save you in most cases, especially not against, uh, against the Germans with the Pan 35s. God damn it. Now, such you have, to, you have to try and never be singled out. This tank is excellent at dealing with single targets. 
since you can just get its, its shells off so quickly. But, when you find yourself alone against multiple enemies, you are screwed. This tank is going to let you down. This tank is not designed for dealing with multiple enemies uh, that are coming from multiple directions. I mean, yes, theoretically you can one-shot kill three tanks in a very short space, but this is War Thunder. One-shots are not very reliable. Even though you have a nice amount of explosive filler, it's still only 68 grams. This is still only a 75mm gun. So don't expect too much there. Oh, so that's an ASU. Well, never mind being the second line of defense. <laughs> Come, he barely saw us at an angled 75 million plate and he still went through. I just keep getting one shot in this thing, like it's not even funny. You would expect a tank this big to at least be resistant to some kind of one shot, but it isn't. And it isn't even Amorax. 85 million big gun just absolutely wrecked this thing. Alright, let's try this again. Uh, we're on the back on the same map that we were on the first battle. Actually, the second battle, yes. Not too good. Again, this is a close quarter map. Why are we getting shot by a teammate? This is a close quarter map. This tank is not designed for close quarter battles. You have to try and stay at long ranges. Try to use that auto loading feature. Uh, I have problems with this tank. I honestly have problems with this tank. Now here's the thing, it is definitely one of, uh, one of the more interesting vehicles in Warframe, simply because of the autoloader, okay? And because of the hull-mounted uh, 737 as well, which can be used. The problem is, does it really have a have a space in War Thunder? Now mention this when this tank was first, uh, was first released, or even first announced. I am worried about autoloaders, I really am worried about autoloaders. Now, this is what I would think is the best implementation of an autoloader we can see in War Thunder, simply because... Well, it's not really all that powerful. Yes, you have a big advantage against single targets, but you rarely are going to be facing single targets. And you also pay with heavily with the overall performance of the tank itself. It is big, it is not very well armored, it is very, very, very slow. And once you run out of those three shots, yeah, you're going to stay there for 30 seconds waiting for a reload. So it's definitely not the essential, not the best tank you could drive at this battle rating. Even the 5.0, this is not the best tank you could be driving at this battle rating. That being said, can you try and make this thing work? Now the tanks are aside, I don't want to stay out in this open field for too long. There was a Sherman buzzing past, I believe. Question, is there going to be anything guarding this? I don't think we have any enemies guarding this. Is it not Shiri too? Oh, oh, we see a tank, we see a tank. And we bounce. And this is where the problems of the, guns co of the gun comes in. You have a nice amount of explosive filler, yes. But you don't have much when it comes to penetration. That's, that's a drawback you pay with. Yes, you can get one-shot kills off. Uh, but good luck actually trying to penetrate stuff. Even that Sherman. I think, although, it, that might have been a jumbo, so... Chances are we would have bounced off that guy anyway. But now, we're in this predicament where you have to try and flank around, but this thing is just too slow. Not to mention the absolutely horrible turret traverse as well. And turret traverse in general, this thing is not mobile whatsoever. Now question is, does he know that we are here? There's a Panzer IV rolling by. Where'd that Sherman go? Oh, there he is. He is alive. No, he isn't anymore. Okay. So far, so good. First kill of the match. Can we keep this up, though? Interestingly, none of them is actually holding this zone. Also, we only have one round left. So, this is now where we are in the predicament. Do we want to fire off this single round and reload? Or do we want to do this and fail completely? So, now we are stuck with a 30 second reload, right? Thankfully, we do have a 37, which doesn't penetrate in an A truck. What? Our 37 millimeter gun just failed to penetrate an A truck. How does that even work? I don't know. I think we have some more. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hello. Got the transmission. Teammate took him down. Good. So this is where the 37 comes in. This is definitely where the 37 comes in. 
Yes, you wait for a long, long time to get your gun reloaded. But the 37 can at least crack tanks from the side. Speaking of side, there's an M18. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. We are dead. We are so dead. Oh, he missed! Oh, he missed. Okay, okay. Oh! That was a nice one shot. Alright, alright. We are still safe for now. The problem is now we don't have... Oh, hello. Okay, another one shot. The problem we are running now into is we don't have any backup here. Our teammates died. And there's a shot from behind. And now we are dead. There's nothing we can do. The M18 is going to outclass this thing, outmaneuver this thing any time. Our side armor is way too weak. 50 second reload. No chances. Alright, and this shall be our last game for today. Now in the last battle we actually managed to hold off ourselves pretty well. I think we got 3 or 4 kills there. But once we got flanked, once we ran out of friendlies and since we were in close quarters, there's not much you can do. M18s are going to be your nightmare in this tank. Now, we are again in a close quarters map. No, Gaijin, why do you want to ruin my <laughs> my recording session? This is not good. Number at least we can somewhat direct the direction of where the enemies are coming from. I'm going to be trying and flanking all the way around. Yes, in a slow tank like this I'm going to be trying and flanking all the way around. Because then we can at least guarantee that the enemy is going to come from one certain direction. Now we're facing off against the Russians, so this time we have the M18s on our side, which is good. The question is, can we make it work? Now this auto line gun is... It's, it's an enigma, really. The tank itself is just poor. The chassis on which it's mounted on is just very, very poor. The Tier 2 chassis, very slow turret traverse. The armor doesn't really count for anything at this, at this battle rating. The side armor is absolutely horrible and pace for that supposed armor and that supposed gun with a heavy, heavy lack of mobility. This thing's just sluggish all the way around. The gun, however, I have to say, the gun itself is marvelous. The gun itself really is marvelous, as you saw in the last battle. We got one shots left and right. They do definitely have the explosive filler, even if they don't really have the, the penetration by themselves. The question now really is, is the tank really worth it? Is this tank really viable? And what else does it bring to the game? Because keep in mind, this is the first war, uh, the first auto we are seeing in War Thunder, which opens the door to, to a whole new type of tank. We might see new Alteros in the future, stuff like French Tank, for example, which French tanks, which were famous for their use of autoloaders. The thing is, this tank with an autoload is very manageable, and I fear that Gajan is going to be basing off the experience gained with this tank in whether or not they want to introduce new autoloaders. The thing is, this thing is quite weak. Yes, it has a decent gun, but it only has three shots. Suffers from that for. Okay. <laughs> it suffers from a very long reload once those three shots are done. And and it also has poor penetration. And not only that, not only it compensates with the gun performance itself, it also compensates with having a very weak hull in general. Yes, it is 75 millimeters of arm, but you saw. So far I, I'm yet to bounce a shot actually. Even with the bushes on. The 75mm of armor is just not enough, the 35mm of side armor is just absolutely terrible. And we get one shot once again. I have to say, this tank feels a little bit like a matchbox. I'm not too convinced of the performance of this tank in general. Now, yes, the gameplay you saw was not the best. Keep in mind, this was live commentary. Normally I spend a couple of hours to get the perfect uh, footage in, but... In any other tank, I feel like in any other tank I would have done much better. This tank just doesn't really instill... What's it called? Instill um, confidence in me. And confidence is very important when you're driving your vehicle. Stuff like the Spitfire Griffin, for example, the F20, the Mark 24, which I'm currently doing a video on, by the way, which should be released together with this video, if not a little bit later. So, hint, hint, not not. Keep an eye out for that. Vehicles like the Griffin instill me with with confidence, which I use in the battle. The more confidence you have in your in your vehicle and the capabilities of your vehicle, the better you're going to do. This thing. Not so much. It seems like a one-trick pony. It really seems like a one-trick pony. Yes, you have a gun that has one-shot kill potential and a very high fire rate 
within that three round burst. But once those three rounds are gone, you're useless. You're just useless, there's nothing you can do. Your tank is very, very sluggish. You, you seem to, 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 to blow up in a single shot every single time, although it might have been just a placebo, it might have just have been confirmation bias on my side, but you saw it yourself. You blow up very easily, and you get penetrated by anything. And even though you already pay heavily with the long reload time in the port penetration, you also pay on the overall chassis of the tank. So the final question remains, do I recommend Ichiwi 2? Should, should, should you get this tank? Should you even bother playing it? I would say yes, just for the novelty, really. This tank can be fun with its outloading, it can be fun with the one-shot kill potential, but keep in mind that this is not going to be the kind of tank you can carry games with, especially not if you're alone against multiple enemies. It just doesn't work with the uh, penalty that the autoloader introduces. And what I was saying is, I fear that Gajin is going to see the poor performance of this autoloader thing that's... Oh, hey, look at this autoloader. It's not its not the, all that powerful as people were expecting it to be, so let's introduce more autoloaders. And then they introduce um, French autoloaders with more magazines and mobility, which can fuck the game up quite a lot. So, in end result, Chiri 2, interesting tank, wouldn't bother talismaning this thing. But hey, those are just my experiences, maybe or something else. Also, Japanese tanks have been out for, a while, for quite a while now, so I expect some of you people to actually have played this tank quite extensively, so I'm actually looking forward to your input and your feedback in the comment section down below. Maybe I've done something wrong, I'm not sure. I might do a full review on this thing if I get enough feedback and how to actually play this tank properly, because I just couldn't figure out a playstyle. Tried to go close quarters, of course it doesn't work with the mobility of the tank. Tried to go second line, didn't really work either. Tell me your experience in the comment section down below. Am I right? Am I wrong? Is this tank actually amazing and I just suck? Do let me know. But anyways, if you've liked this video, do leave it a like rating. If you disliked, do leave it a dislike. That way I know that I suck. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification button to join the notification squad. And as always, my name is Michael's Boom. Stick around for the next video, which is going to be on the... Actually, I'm not sure in which order I'm going to release this video. Let's just know that, let's just say that I'm releasing a lot of videos today. Two or three. Something like that. Yes. So the next video, at least War Thunder video, is going to be on the Spitfire Mark 24, a full review. And yeah, I'll see you then. As always, my name's Mike is Boom, and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky. Take a deeper breath and give it time. You can walk the path among the lines with your shattered frame of mind. Who is that you could always stay? We can wait right here and play until somehow you can find.